Welcome back to The Breakfast. It is the Mindset Monday edition, and it's time for us to go to the headlines and see what some of our national dailies are reporting. But before we do that, we do have a clip. I mentioned to you earlier that we needed to give you an update on a traffic situation in some part of Lagos. And we have a short clip uh, where an accident occurred involving a truck. Uh, can we have that clip involving a truck? There you have it. It happened close to Osakwa, London. Uh, if you're coming from Chevron, a giant axis of Lagos, this is what you will see. This was taken by one of our crew members this morning on his way to work as early as 5.20. He saw this and there was serious traffic for more than 40 minutes. And this is an appeal to the relevant authorities to do the needful and get that truck off the road because that axis is a very busy one. Hundreds of thousands of vehicles will be needing to go through that access. And if that truck is not removed, not many people will be able to get to their destinations on time today. So that's a truck, an accident involving a truck at the Osaka London access of Chevron, Aja, Lagos. Okay, so it's time for us to take a look at uh, what's happening on some headlines of the national dailies. And we'll begin with Nature News. Nature News leads with why 70% of Nigeria's food export are rejected. That's according to NAVDAC. 70% of Nigeria's food exports are rejected. If you go on top of the masthead, you have... World Migratory Bird Day. NCF advocates safe, sustainable water for birds. That story is right there on the front page, but details are more of it we find on page 11 of Nature News. FG advocates more use of bamboo trees for climate change mitigation. Details of that is on page five. Buhari commissions large-scale integrated rice mill in Abuja. Details of that is on page 12. And on the strip down, you have Anthony Joshua resumes training ahead, wilder about. That's uh, page 21 of Nature News newspaper. From Nature News, we'll move to Leadership newspaper. And Leadership newspaper leads with where you have a picture of President Muhammadu Buhari there. Seven days to go, Buhari shifts gear. And the rider there, President brace up, residents brace up as PMBs return to the Aura Entire's final phase. Details of that is on page four of leadership. Seven days to go, Buhari shifts gear. And residents brace up as PMBs return to the Aura Entire's final page. Uh, phase. You have details of that on page four. That's a very beautiful picture of the president there in front of the leadership newspaper. Uh, so on the masthead, you have CCTV project. Court asked FG to account for $460 million Chinese loan. That's a loan taken in 2010 for CCTV project that failed. Yet Nigeria is already servicing that loan. And <laughs> The contract was not well executed. Going down, you have 10th National Assembly, Yari Kalu G6, turned down emissaries. You have piece, uh, details of that on page 7 of the leaders' newspaper, the leadership newspaper. Reps, minority leadership, Atiku Wike in fresh war. Page 4 is where you have details of that. And five African presidents join PMB to commission Angote refinery today. Page 31 is where you find details of that on the leadership newspaper. From the leadership newspaper, we we'll move into a new entrant, National Economy. This is the first time we'll be having that feature on the breakfast this morning. Uh, today, uh, on the breakfast, I beg your pardon, National Economy. And it's leading with $19 billion Angote refinery 
Nigeria's local refinery comes alive again. Nigeria's local refining comes alive again with the Ryder refinery will save country $9 billion annually. That's according to experts. There you have the beautiful picture there of the refinery, said to be the biggest in the world. Pension fund assets in FGN securities rises to 10.19 trillion naira. Why have the clouds not rolled away yet? That is a question. You want to find out what the answer is? We'll have details of that on page 10 of the national economy. On top of the national economy, you have the stock exchange report. So if you want to find out what the stocks are saying, you need to pick up that um, newspaper, the national economy, to get details of what the stocks are about. And then you move from the national economy to the nation newspaper. The nation newspaper leads with Shatima. Tinubu will run an all-inclusive administration. The writer there, why Southeast should support incoming government by Umahi. The story continues on page five. Why Southeast should support incoming government by Umahi. Why president-elect met with Kwankoso by Jibril. The writer, Ganduje, aware of parley. Buhari, five African presidents inaugurate Dangote refinery. The, the details are already on the front page, but it concludes on the inside. That's you have page five. That's where you have conclusion of this report. And on top of the masthead, you have Explain your source of wealth, El Rufai tells predecessors. You have details of that on page 8. Interest rate likely to go up again as NPC meets. Details of that is on page 5 of the Nation newspaper. Sack fever grips aviation workers after fan shakeup. Page 8 is where details of that can be found. And Afe Babalala urges incoming government to seek debt forgiveness. Page 10 of the nation newspaper is where you have details of that. And that's all the headlines we shall be uh, reading from the dailies, the four dailies that we've looked at. And right now we've been joined by our guest, Professor Kami Lusani Fage. He's of the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kano. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. How are you today? Fine. Thank you. All right. So let's start with the headline on national economy. Nigeria's local refining comes alive again. The Dangote refinery. How excited are you about this refinery? Um, I am very much excited and hopeful that um, at least one of the lingering uh, problems in Nigeria uh, is going to be addressed. Uh, we are an oil producing country, but um, getting it has become a nightmare for Nigerians. So we hope there will be availability and uh, eventually we also hope uh, the price will come down and then also the income to Nigeria uh, will improve because they say it is going to save Nigeria a lot of money. So with all of this, I think um, every Nigeria will be very much excited to see that it takes up and uh, it continues to work uh, to eternity. Well, have you ever wondered why uh, other players have not come to fore? Because we understand that there have been um, Licenses have, have, you know, to operate have been given to some other companies. Yet yeah, it's only Angote that has come on to bring this about. 
Why do you yeah. think these other companies haven't taken it, you know, making made use of the licenses given to them? Okay. I think uh, one major reason is the fact that uh, corruption is endemic in Nigeria. So that um, has been, you know, scaring many investors, not only in the oil industry, but in so many uh, sectors of our Nigerian economy. People find it that um, because of corruption, what, it, what might take a, a little amount of money uh, you have to invest more in terms of greasing hands. And also, uh, the second reason is perhaps there is no conducive um, environment. Uh, by this, I mean, uh, look at the, the, the cost of uh, production. Uh, things that you will need, like uh, electricity, uh, sources of energy, are not available. So this plus uh, the corruption and uh, so many other things are uh, what um, hinder uh, many uh, prospective investors to come to Nigeria. And uh, those who are here also tend to uh, fly away the country, you know. We, we, we saw so many ghost uh, industries, like here where I am here in Kano, we are seeing a lot of them over as 80% of the industries are now, you know, a ghost of themselves because of what I told you, uh, corruption, high cost of protection, uh, and so on. That uh, That is why many refuse to come into uh, the industry, I mean, Nigeria to invest. Okay, let's move from um, that to the leadership newspaper, Professor Fagi. The leadership newspaper uh, has one of the headlines, CCTV project, Court asked FG to account for $460 million Chinese loan. This loan was taken in 2010. We're already servicing that debt, yet it's a failed project. Yes. You see, this is, uh, this is part of the Nigerian problem. Uh, we borrow money. Uh, instead of putting it to use, uh, some people corner the money. So I think it is right that um, this thing has to be investigated. After all, Nigerians are paying, and uh, yet the project is not uh, on ground. Now, if we investigate these things and find out who uh, the you know culprit and the issue, I think the next thing is to take appropriate action. Otherwise, this issue of impunity will continue. And this is one of the reasons uh, that I said earlier on why investors are not willing to come to Nigeria. Uh, you now borrow money after how many years and nothing has happened. And the people who uh, you know, are involved in that are going scotch free. So I think uh, it is the right thing to do. We shouldn't just stop at uh, investigating it. We have to take right action on those who are found guilty. This is the only way that um, things will work for Nigeria. This is the only way that uh, we can assure uh, foreign investors to come to the country and invest. Yeah, and this is the only way that we can raise local uh, uh, industrialists to work for Nigeria. Actually, the reps, you know, members of the House of Reps have been probing this for some years now. And finally, a court has ruled and, and it's asking the federal government to account for that a $460 million Chinese loan. Uh, the Minister for Finance uh, had said, while the reps were you know, questioning her, that she couldn't give details of this particular project, but that it was already being serviced. Well, we'll wait and see how this administration will respond, considering the fact that they have a few days to go, and this is coming from the court. Yeah, you see, you see, the, the road is too deep and uh, so wide that um, that is why people are gradually dragging their feet. But uh, you know, uh, otherwise, why should the National Assembly uh, took so long, you know, to investigate this issue? Uh, it now has to take a court to do it, and I think it is going to be too late. We have only seven days for the 
a government to wind up and uh, nothing will happen in these uh, seven days and by the time the incoming government comes in you know it will take time to now say that they are going to settle uh, before they could settle uh, those who are uh, uh, involved will now take the advantage and set things free and then they will go on perhaps if care is not taken this is going to be the end of it uh, we just talk, talk, and nothing happens to uh, as a result of it. You do not have confidence that uh, the court order will be respected? Yeah, you see, I, I don't, because one of our problems is that of impunity. Uh, people defy the laws, and uh, they go scotch free. So I don't think things will change so rapidly, I mean, so quickly now. Because, like I said, uh, if we go by the Nigerian practice, the way we do things, it will take this government, the incoming government, uh, not more, than, not less than six months to say that they are going to know the terrain. Uh, because they have to adjust, do this and set up, the whatever. And uh, if you wait, as they say, justice delays is justice denied. By the time you take additional uh, six months, then uh, other things will come. And then when it goes to, uh, you know, the litigation, they will start throwing this in all sorts of delay. And at the end of it, perhaps the case will be thrown out on technicalities, not on substance. Substantially, there is an issue, but on technicalities, it will, you know, be thrown out because after all, the uh, judiciary too is deep in corruption, and uh, so that is why people are not that optimistic about it. We tend to be a little bit pessimistic that uh, these issues will not uh, be finally resolved, uh, and the court order will not be uh, respected. All right, let's move to the nation newspaper. On the masthead, you have explain your source of wealth. El Rufai tells predecessors. Um, that's something close home to you, isn't it? You're in Kano. This is uh, El Rufai in Kaduna State asking his predecessors to explain their source of wealth. How, how do you respond to this? That um, they say you, you lead by example. Uh, had it been he is able to do it there, he has been, I'm not talking of him in a, in a person like that, but I'm talking generally about the leadership. They have been in power, uh, you know, changing position from minister, from this to this. And they should have done that. Now, if they do it, I think uh, their predecessors could do it, but I'm not depending on anybody, but this is what we want. Uh, Nigerians really want a leadership that is accountable, that is responsive to the Nigerians, and that is accountable to Nigerians. But the way we have uh, this issue, it comes back to what I said earlier on, the issue of impunity. You cannot sit down uh, and say, okay, explore this while you didn't do it. They, they are in a position. Uh, they should have done it. And if they do it, then that will be easier for them to call other people to do it. And uh, that will be easier for other people to respect uh, what they are being called to do. All right. Still on the Nation newspaper, you have SAC fever groups aviation workers after fan shakeup. Yes. You see, uh, this shakeup. Is what we wanted uh, a long ago, but it came a little bit uh, uh, too late, or a little bit uh, rather late. So I think there will be that uh, fever around. Uh, one reason will be that perhaps uh, you know the weaker ones are the ones that would be affected. Those big fish in the uh, rot will escape and. Uh, Perhaps we may likely end up, you know, just putting a new, uh, why, uh, an old wine in a new bottle. What I'm trying to say is perhaps you see the big ones that are really involved will get their way. And uh, after the shake-up, they will be there. 
and uh, those who may not be deeply involved, or some of them who are uh, not even involved, will be the one who will be affected. In short, uh, people are afraid of scape uh, scapegoatism, that uh, those who are not in the good books of uh, the people who are in charge are the ones that are likely going to be affected. But we are hopeful that uh, the shake-up will bring some sanity and uh, in in this in the in the system all right still on the nation newspaper you have uk to ban foreign students from relocating with families you are in the education sector uh, how how do you see this new development from the uk government Okay, I think um, it's a two-way thought, a two-edged thought. Uh, one is the fact that, you know, many people move and eventually they will either uh, naturalize there or they will take their jobs, and that is what uh, they don't want. But uh, for us, I think um, it may be a positive thing for us if we can get the brains. We, drain, uh, we now prevent uh, brain drainage, you know, People who are good, they will go back and eventually when they finally leave the country with their family, they will lose touch of uh, what uh, they are expected to come back and do it. But I think Britain is, um, on the other hand, is uh, overflowing the issue because of the huge amount of money that they get. One of the areas that they get uh, income is through, you know, foreign students, especially like uh, those who are coming from Nigeria and other developing countries. So, but I think um, the, the, the immigration laws, uh, well, like, like I said, it is a two-edged sword. It has a, their own positive thing to reduce this massive uh, movement influx of uh, foreigners and on the other hand uh, it will cut uh, affect the economy also uh, don't forget uh, the the issue of brexit uh, exit uh, from the uk um, eu is still hunting it and uh, so this will add up uh, to their own problems all right so here, the last I will take from the Nation newspaper, terrorists take over Kenji National Park. I didn't take that while I was taking a look at the headlines, but just discussing with you now, I am seeing it. And you are in the north. Perhaps you, know, you are in a good position to give us more information on this. Terrorists take over Kenji National Park. Do you know anything about that, Prof? No, I haven't, but uh, I know these uh, are some of the things that we expect because in so many places uh, here in the news and I believe in other areas there are ungovernable spaces. So once we have um, issues like that, uh, we may say that it is not uh, unexpected because the government is, be is not being pelted in such uh, places. Uh, we tend to put more of our emphasis on security, on guiding the leaders, and living a uh, power area. So that is why the terrorists can easily uh, move from one place to another. And uh, the other thing is also the issue of corruption, that uh, even some security agents and some leaders are, you know, in cahoot with uh, such uh, things. But I think this is a dangerous thing uh, for the terrorists to be, you know, doing whatever they want. Uh, I, I think it's dangerous and it affects the lives uh, of the people. Uh, it will also scare investors. It has so many things uh, that uh, affect that it has not more than this. Uh, they are present there. Also, it is a dent on the image of Nigeria internationally that you find out in so many places terrorists are doing whatever they want to do and they go uh, scotch for it. Uh, well, still on the Nation newspaper, you have Shatima. Tinubu will run an all-inclusive administration. How do you respond to that? 
Yeah, that is a good thing if we could have um, an un un uh, all-inclusive government, uh, meaning the various parts of uh, the country have to be involved. Uh, we hope it shouldn't be just um, the usual politicking, because we know that constitutionally the cabinet has everything must have a representation uh, in the, the cabinet. But we hope uh, that they will see a new change where uh, expertise on experts uh, will be brought into the government. And then we now have um, a reflection of every sector of the country that will douse the political tension that uh, Nigeria uh, is uh, facing, this issue of uh, domination here and so on. And above all, if we have a, an all-inclusive government, we hope things will change for the better because what builds a nation is the team of leadership. So I hope uh, it, it, uh, it is not going to be just mere politicking on politics, uh, but rather we base it on competence and, uh, you know, inclusiveness. All right. Thank you so much, Professor, for your time. Professor Kamilu Fani Fage is of the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kano State. Thank you so much, Professor, for your time and insight this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you very much. Well, you're still watching The Breakfast, and it's time for a look at what the weather will be like today, especially if you're yet to leave the house. We'll take a look at that and come back to take a look at our very first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>